Now at the lowest rate year over year since April of 2021. Joining me right now is Bonson Group founder and managing partner, David Bonson. David, great to see you. Thanks for being here. As President Biden takes a victory lap this week on the economy, and despite the cooling inflation, you've got some concerns. Yes, I've been talking for a long time about the idea that I didn't really like Republicans trying to pile on the inflation story because the inflation story was inevitably going to go away. Even with all the reckless things President Biden did with the April of 2021 spending bill, the fact of the matter is that there was never enough embedded economic growth in this economy. We have spent so much money that it takes away from future growth, puts downward pressure on production over time. And I think that's the big concern that I want people who value free enterprise to focus on, that we are getting subpar economic growth and we've been getting it now for 15 years. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, Robert Kaplan mentioned that on this program a couple of weeks ago, that even as the Federal Reserve tries to rein in inflation, they're dealing with the tsunami of spending on the fiscal side. Uh, and, and so there's still inflation out there. But, David, I want to get your take on where things are going. We've had a very good first half of the year in stocks. Uh, will we have a repeat in the second half of the year? What's your expectation for the second half now as we begin the second half this week uh, on the economy and on markets? I will be very surprised if the way the market goes in the second half looks much like the first half. You can have a good second half, but I don't think it does it the same way. What I mean by that is 10 stocks being 85% of the return of the S&P 500. It's the highest in history. And the other years where you had such a small amount of stocks be such a huge portion of the return, and primarily we're just talking about a few tech stocks. This year it's AI, obviously, right? You're talking about 2007, 1999, 2021, years that were followed by really challenging years in the market. We don't like the whole index. We don't like being dependent on very expensive big technology stocks. But we do think there's great opportunity out there. And as dividend growth investors, we want to find those companies that can grow their dividends through what may end up being a mild recession. Yeah, I, I, I love the idea that you like dividend payers because that's giving you consistent growth. Uh, and and, and uh, we've seen the success there. But, David, what do I do with technology? Look at some of these names. Meta up 100 plus percent. Microsoft up 40 percent year to date. Apple hit a three trillion dollar valuation on Friday. What do you want to do if you've got all these outsized gains in your portfolio in tech? Hold them or sell them? Well, I think you want to be grateful that they didn't raise your capital gain taxes, for one thing, yeah, because if right. you do need to sell them, there's probably going to be capital gain taxes now. And yet that's never a reason to hold a stock avoiding taxation. I think people do want to trim gains in all those positions you mentioned. And all of them are great companies. I don't have anything negative to say about the business. The stock price and the business are two different things. And it's one of the most important things an investor can ever learn. A stock price can be disconnected from the reality of a business, even when the reality of a business is very good. And that's yeah. where I think you see these things going. They're just overpriced, Maria. All right. Real quick on the economy, David. In about two weeks, we'll start getting uh, the second quarter earnings releases. JP Morgan will kick yeah. us off on July 14th, I believe. What are we going to hear from earnings and how does that fit in with this narrative that you're expecting a mild recession? Well, who would have guessed that we'd start off this second quarter with a, a few different pretty significant bank failures and everyone talking about the Fed continuing to raise rates and banks having such a, a, a struggle. And look at how J.P. Morgan did in the second quarter stock wise. So we're going to get their earnings in a, in a week or so. And I think that uh, people are going to be very surprised how strong the big banks are. The overall earnings season is going to have disappointments. And this is going to be a really interesting quarter for earnings because you're going to have companies that really underperform and companies that overperform. It's going to be more of a stock pickers market than an indexers market. I'm very confident in that. All right, what are the best dividend payers, do you think, and the dividend growers? 
Well, and again, those two things, you want a good, uh, attractive dividend and you want it to be growing over time. We really like Simon Property right now when you can get over a 7% yield for wow. a company 7%. that has very consistent cash flows. I mentioned J.P. Morgan already is one of the only big banks that has that great growing dividend. And then really, Maria, I think that you want to look to what has gotten hit so far this year. Where has there been some distress? Walgreens is definitely a distressed company. They have a lot of work to do. But now they're up near a 7% dividend yield. They've grown it for over 50 years and they have enough earnings to still cover it even during this tough time. Wow. Great info, David. Thank you. Thanks so much, Maria. Happy Fourth of July. All right. Legendary NFL quarterback 